Welcome back to Getting Into Character, a Win With Dice video series about making characters in various tabletop RPGs, uh, and our first episode in a while, and our first episode of 2021. Uh, today, uh, Ramon is going to be running me through making a character in Lancer. Uh, Ramon, say hello. Hey guys, well, uh, less of like running Calvin through, but because, you know, uh, CompCon exists. Uh, if you're yes. not familiar with the game Lancer, there is a crowdfunded uh, app that you, that a desktop app that you can just use to create your lancer characters um it's actually super easy and super fun to use yeah it, it made things like a lot easier for me i think we've, we've talked about this before on our podcast the win with ice podcast which you should check out how Definitely. having software like this just makes things a lot easier especially for new yeah. players to a game so yeah, uh, yeah, I guess the definitely. plan is I'm going to come in with a character concept and we'll make a level zero character and hopefully it will be somewhat instructive as to how you go about making a character, especially if you're using CompCon. Um, it does um, it does help you out a lot. Definitely. But let's not flim flam. Let's uh, get into... That's what the people want. <laughs> <laughs> so I've heard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, apparently right. that's our thing is flim flamming. Yeah. So yeah. Um, I did sort of use this character before in a one shot that wasn't streamed or anything, but basically I'm kind of ripping off a Lego mech from the Lego Exo Force series, the Stealth Hunter. Is that, is that what that 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 was about? Like a hundred percent. Oh my god. Okay. So the Stealth Hunter, it's sort of designed like with these wings, so it's like it's clearly meant for very rapid flight. Uh, it also has a laser weapon and a double bladed sword, so I'm gonna see how close I can get to that. Uh, essentially, I'm just aiming for something where the focus on it is flying. Uh, it has a ranged weapon and it has some sort of bladed weapon. Okay, man. <laughs> what about your pilot? You got a, any inspiration from your for your pilot? Like, what kind of person the pilot's gonna be? Uh, oh, I have no idea. I'm thinking they might be some sort of actual like jet pilot, like I had done before. But maybe something else will strike my fancy. Yeah, okay. Great. So let's so, get into it. I'm gonna click on add new pilot to my comp con. Ooh, add new pilot. Okay. Create new pilot. Yeah. So a cool thing if if you just wanna if you don't have a name in mind, they have a bunch of um randomly generated stuff because all pilots have like a name and a call sign and then you can assign them like a background. Um whatever background you want. So uh I don't know, Calvin, do you have a name or just click the generate button? <laughs> Um, I mean, I did have a name. So. Yeah, slap that <laughs> but bad boy in. I'm looking at this generate button. <laughs> Some of these are pretty good. Yeah. Okay, also, I'm going like, to go with name, this name. I, I generated a name. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. The Jurian Coins. Jurian Coins. Damn, man. These names are actually really good. <laughs> and and I like that they're, they're, all, they're all over the place. Like, some of them are more you know uh, asian inspired some of them are just you know uh, more north american uh, or, or and so you know it's it's actually like a really really big mix of, of names uh, some of them just sci-fi weird which is pretty cool too uh all right let's do you have a call sign in mind or do you want to randomly generate one well i was getting used to call sign valkyrie but now i'm just clicking the button a bunch to see if i end up with something even better oh i saw comment but then i clicked i'm gonna use comment <laughs> All right, so we got Comet. And uh, there is a list of backgrounds available. Um, yes. That That's kind of listed uh, if you click on the the thingy. Yeah, I, just, I clicked on the button and now it's giving me a list of all of them. <laughs> right, but you don't, you're not beholden to choose. This is just kind of like flavor text of, of uh, to get your character kind of situated in the Lancer universe, which is set in our universe just 5,000 years in the future or 5,000 years after the collapse. So who knows how far in the future, actually. <laughs> so, yeah. Well, a lot of these are really great, but I think I'm going to go with Starship Pilot. I think Starship that Pilot. best befits what I'm aiming for. Ooh, civilian, corporate, military? Who cares? You, you're the best pilot in the goddamn galaxy. Exactly. Don't tell you the odds. <laughs> <laughs> Never tell me the odds. And of course, you can add like a biography or a physical description. Uh, but that's outside the scope of this video. <laughs> yeah, um, we'll, we'll, 
we'll we'll that figure out character in. backgrounds. We'll do a podcast episode of that maybe. Yeah, maybe. Uh, also, the cool thing about um, Compound, they they already have some templates built in. So if you look on templates, you can choose between a couple of these options. I think we're gonna go and make our own. But the fact that you just if you're just new to the game and you want to quickly start, and uh, it gives you a little blurb description of what what uh, what the tactics is for for this kind of um, build. Um, and uh, you could just start. You could just literally be like, ah, I want a sniper. <laughs> Go click the sniper build. It'll give you a bunch of stuff to make you feel like a sniper. Like, ah, oh, I want to be a hacker. Click the hacker build and it'll give you all the stuff that you will, you know, make you be a, a good hacker for, for the, you know, a starting, a starting uh, Lancer pilot. But uh, we're gonna go ahead and, and make our own. So yeah, click that button. Hit the continue button. So now we are on to skill triggers. Yes. So uh, in Lancers, uh, skill triggers are uh, basically like they're like exactly what they sound like. They're skills that you can use during narrative moments. Like typically in like D and D or Pathfinder, you would have you know your your all of your attack stuff for attacking and all of your skill stuff for for when you're you know climbing a cliff or negotiating with an NPC or something like that. Um, but in, in Lancer, everyone can do anything. These things are called triggers because they trigger off of the things that you're trying to do. So in a good example is apply fist to faces. The first one you read, it says what it does. So anytime you're in a fight, you're able to get a bonus to applying fist to faces, um, specifically for hand to hand combat. Yeah. Um, something that right. we used a lot in our game was the hacker fix skill where we were trying to sort of like repair a system um, that was being glitchy or faulty. Right, right. So these are essentially like your skill checks. Yeah, it well, specifically, again, it's like uh, I know that in other games, if you don't have a skill, then you can't do it. But technically, um, a Anybody in Lancer can do anything. Um, it's just that some people are just way better at it than than you, right? <laughs> so uh, what yeah. I'm kind of thinking is um, I want them to be a bit showy, be a bit cool. So I'm going to take show off. So if I get a chance to show off, then uh, I, can use, I can apply my skill trigger to that. Uh, stay cool to help me stay cool under pressure. Um, I like to get somewhere quickly. I like to imagine this person is as fast as their mech is. Um, now I'm kind of deciding between either charm or lead or inspire. I think mm. I'm going to go with charm. Okay. Okay. That's cool. Yeah. Also, um, they're kind of split up into four categories where, you know, one, one's a very like, you know, applying force directly physical the other ones like you know getting creative noticing details and so you can really just you could take as many triggers as you want so if you just want to be you know uh you know very very diplomatic or you know charismatic you could take all of the the triggers that are in um um just like the you know i guess the the bard <laughs> the, the bard, <laughs> the bard track the bard track um which i mean it's great whatever character again this is just all narrative um focus stuff and uh you could also create your own custom triggers if you want mm -hmm. which i think is also a good idea um again triggers aren't specific uh to anything it's not like there's a uh climb skill or something like that um but yeah they're very, they're very narrative a... based exactly and if you want to be good at climbing for some reason <laughs> you can <laughs> or or you know um so yeah you can go ahead or and... will that be gets that would cause me get somewhere quickly too i guess but if yeah, you want specific yeah, they're, they're pretty it. general yeah that's yeah, that's for sure. what's that like they're very like again like very narrative very non-specific yeah. so they apply uh yeah, yeah. they give you more freedom and, in narrative uh, situations yeah and you have to you can only put um i guess one rank or or in whatever um trigger that's there for the first one everything you have to put you have to only get the get one into it and then as you level up you'll you can uh double up instead of getting a plus two you get a plus four bonus and stuff like that up to, to a maximum of plus six yeah um yeah 
So uh, you can go ahead. And now, now these are for the next section. These are for pilot talents. And uh, pilot talents are the the abilities you get while you're piloting your mech, um, which is pretty cool. Uh, mech has like half. That's like I think most of the reason why you want to play Lancer is to be a cool mech pilot with cool mech pilot skills. And uh, yeah, Calvin, what were you thinking? There's a whole there's a whole bunch of them. Oh, I was gonna let you explain the talents more as I decided. Um, oh, okay. <laughs> all right. So well, first so off, I'm gonna I'm gonna go with Ace probably. <laughs> yeah. How about right. you flim so, flam while I make decisions? <laughs> right. So for license level zero, uh, you get to pick three talents, and you can choose the first level in each talent. And each talent has three levels essentially. So Calvin's going with um, Ace as his first choice because obviously Ace is the the talent you choose when you want to fly high and be a cool fly boy, um, real top gun in it. So, uh, sure. so you know, and you also get abilities to, to make your your mech be better at flying, right? Be better at ace. Um, but as you as you level up, you'll get uh, you know extra t uh, more talents every level, and uh, you can choose to increase your rank in ace to get. Uh, so first first level you get acrobatics, and next level you get afterburners, which is, you know, another cool thing that makes you fly faster. Um, and this is the same for all talents. Uh, they have three levels, and the more you put into one, the the more uh, abilities you get to unlock. But you can mix and match um, talents all you like. So uh, and build and really customize your your uh, character in terms of a, a lancer pilot. Uh, you made you made a decision, Gal. Well, I went with ac ac yeah. No, no, I was gonna say acrobatics is actually a really good talent because there's lots of systems in the in the game that allows you to just kind of fly for free, <laughs> not for free, but it's like it, it allows you to fly for a certain amount of movement, and uh, I think acrobatics is pretty um, applicable, like quite often actually. I was looking at. I did take a uh, gunslinger. Which gives me a bonus to my accuracy on the first attack roll I make with an auxiliary ranged weapon. Uh, so I have to make sure I put an auxiliary ranged weapon on my mech. Yeah, gotta remember that. Um, I was thinking maybe Brutal, just to throw that in there. Uh, what do you think I should go with? Brutal is always a, a good choice, no matter what, because, you know... It, natural 20 doing the most amount of damage possible like it's, it's just it's just very much like uh yes take brutal if you don't know what you need to take because brutal will always be applicable <laughs> pretty much i'm thinking like in a real world situation i would start playing this character and then realize more things i would need or just keep beefing up my ace skills yeah or ace talent another good yeah another good uh thing you if you plan on doing melee uh more than likely you probably want um Duelist. Duelist is pretty good because it gives you an accuracy on your first melee attack. Oh, on a main, main melee, melee weapon. weapon, right? Oh, then I can have my yeah. auxiliary weapon be a ranged weapon. Okay. Um, you know what? Good call. Yeah. Let's switch well, out Brutal and go for Duelist. Yeah. And specifically, um, I should say that Gunslinger applies to ranged weapons. If you want uh, a talent to apply to like uh, melee auxiliary weapons, then you would go with... Um, I think it is. Ooh, ooh, I'm scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. Where is it? I can't find it. <laughs> so many hunter. <laughs> hunter is hunter is the 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 talent for if you want to use knives, because hunter, I guess. Yeah. Gunslinger I... is for if you want to be a pew pew cowboy. <laughs> oh, hunter lets you fly. Ooh, that's hunter actually pretty lets... cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Right. There's so many little things that let you fly, and if someone. And and Overwatch is a thing in this game, right? So, if if someone misses you on the Overwatch, can you then, explain uh, you what know, Overwatch is? Oh, okay. So if if you start your movement while within someone's threat range, uh, they get to use a reaction. They get one reaction per, uh, I guess, per someone's turn, essentially, and um, you they get to uh, take a, a a skirmish shot on people, which is a skirmish, which is just take use a weapon on a mount uh, attack against uh against the the person who's starting to move so it's kind of like um attack of opportunity in in most other games i think it was called uh so 
um, yeah, uh, but but Hunter, a combination of like lunge on top of ace, which means if they miss, you as you try to like you know d dip and weave around uh, to get into position, then you get to fly an extra two spaces, which is pretty awesome. I think those would really stack really well. Um, yeah, but uh, I think I'm gonna go with what I have right now, which is giving me a bonus to with Duelist and Gunslinger. I'll get a bonus on my first melee, on my first attacks with the main melee and auxiliary ranged. Yeah, I think that'll be good for level zero. And then as I like, I think next level I would definitely make sure to get Hunter in there at some point. For sure, I find that a lot of the first ranks in this stuff give you an extra extra uh, an extra accuracy on the thing that you want to do. So like gunslinger, it's like I want to shoot my my pew pew pistols better. Here's an accuracy. Uh, duelist, I want to be cool with my cool rapier rapier thing, stabby stick. Then it's like okay, cool. Uh, here, take this accuracy. Um, you know, tons of cool stuff. Uh, but there's crazier ones like you know grease monkey that allows you to just spend two repairs to. Get in a free limited system. Uh, yeah, back. Like, Do you want to? Like, I guess explain reload. all those terms you just said, so we don't lose oh people. Oh my gosh! Since this is supposed to be yeah, an instructional yeah. video, uh, kind of. <laughs> it should be an instructional video, but I'm bad at instructing people. So limited systems essentially systems that require ammo. Uh, they require like uh, like there's only so much of it that you can carry on your mech. So we're thinking like grenades. Um, turrets you can only have so many turrets on like a, you can deploy from your mech like deployables are usually limited um some weapons are limited as well so like i know i, I for one of my characters i'm playing in a game in a, in a campaign currently like he has like a double barrel shotgun that only has two shots <laughs> but boy those shots are pretty good <laughs> they better be yeah. So limited uses yeah. essentially and a repair is something you can do um on your like something you can use to repair your mech, but it's a limited resource right. as well. Right. So, so yeah. So repairs are kind of like extra bits that you can use to patch up your mech or use to uh, convert it into to uh, ammunition or, or whatever. So, um, yeah. Uh, I mean, it's cool that you can repair your mech. I think repairs are. I think is it, uh, repairs is is a little bit. Um, I would say uh, takes you a bit out of the character because I can't really imagine my my mech having like spare parts hanging off of it, right? But then this is like five thousand years in the future where like you can convert a coffee maker into a gun or something because the parts are so ubiquitous, <laughs> right? So you know, um, sure, <laughs> I think it's fine. <laughs> but yeah, it's essentially like you have a, a limited number and you can use them to sort of like do minor fixes on your turn. Um, but with yeah. Grease Monkey, if you spend a couple of those resources, then you can replenish a weapon that you normally need to do in downtime. Right. So, okay, we got Ace. You're you're flying around. You got uh, Gunslinger. You're a pew pew cowboy. Yes. And you got Duelist, which you were cool sword man. Yes. <laughs> you're a cool sword man. Uh, yeah, no. And, and honestly, I think that's great. I think you'll have uh, success with this character. Um I mean, to be fair, you can't really make a bad choice. Um, they're all of their uh, all of their uh, talents that you can choose are are all fabulous. I think uh, you can't really make a wrong choice. <laughs> um, but also, they force you to like. Uh, you can only take the first level. You have to take three first level talents in your when you're making your lancer. So it really kind of you know make you choose like a bunch and then when you once you're playing you're able to decide okay maybe i shouldn't go down this route and go somewhere else and maybe i really like you know gunslinger so i want to go all into gunslinger later because you know that's that's the cool stuff that i want exactly <laughs> uh yeah okay cool cool uh let's move on Two and mech then skills. So mech skills are skills that are pertaining to mech combat specifically. So you don't really get to use these abilities too much in um, narrative mode unless, you know, your DM says otherwise or, you know, you just want to or you make a compelling argument. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so we have four of them. There's hall, uh, agility, systems and engineering. So hall is like basically how sturdy and tough your mech is and how good it good it is at wrestling other mechs <laughs> so uh yeah it's the wwe of of skills um sure <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh 
uh, it's the so agility is like how fast your mech is, how speedy it is. You're, you know, you're able. It also ties into oh specifically I should say hull ties directly into your mech HP and your repair capacity. So how much damage your mech can actually take. Uh, agility uh, factors into like you know your evasion. So how how hard is it for other mechs to to you know actually land a shot on you and your speed systems is the cool part systems is the hacking skill essentially and uh it affects your your e defense which is like your electronic defense like how hard is it for the opponent to hack you it affects your tech attack which is like how like it affects your ability to hack other uh enemy mechs it also affects your system points and system points is a cool bit where you can shove different systems into your mech to like you know give you extra hacking choices or you know attach cool booster rockets or all sorts of you know gadgets and gizmos to make you the coolest mech palette in the world so now I'm thinking about it, systems is actually like a really strong skill I mean yeah <laughs> I depending really on your have... build they all can be yeah and, yeah exactly right and um engineering has to do with your heat capacity because you're, you're piloting robots you gotta like you know, you can over overcharge and and build up heat, and some mechs uh, get better the more heat that it builds up. And uh, but also other uh, uh, enemy mechs can make your mech overheat. So having a high heat capacity could allow you to do way way more and push your mech beyond its limits. It also affects your uh, limited systems, which is like you know we just talked about how. Um, it affects like you know uh, uh, resources that your mech can carry, so like drones or deployables or even ammunition. Um, so yeah, <laughs> there's, there's a little guide to to that. Uh, I'm, and you get to choose two. You get to put two uh, points, I guess, into one of the four into each of the four skills, I guess, for this one. I don't know how that sentence came up. But I think Calvin understands. <laughs> so basically, I get two points to put into any of these four skills. I'm thinking of putting both of them into agility right now. Yo, I mean, that's pretty good. I mean, so, yeah, I, I know that the base mech for, for that you start off with is the Everest, and the Everest has eight. And having, like, a ten versus an eight is, like, pretty significant. <laughs> Because <laughs> it'll raise your ace, your your evasion higher. So every point. So also all these things get changed uh, differently. So for every uh, point you put into, um, uh, uh, like hall or something, I, I believe you get. Um, it's two more HP. Yeah, you yeah, get more right? HP, and you also get more repair capacity if you have two points. If you get two points, yeah, right. You get one compared to while while if you put you know uh, points into agility, for every one point you put in agility, that's two that equals to your evasion going up to like one, and you know if you put two points in agility, your speed goes up by one. So uh, it's it's pretty good, I think. I like agility. <laughs> I think agility yeah. is and key. similar for <laughs> similar for systems. Um, you can increase your E defense, which is again your defense against like hacking and electronic attacks, as well as boosting your tech attack and your uh, system points for every couple of points you put in. Uh, and your engineering, it's again it's very similar. You can boost your heat capacity, how much heat you can take, or uh, get a bonus to your limited systems, as Ramon was explaining. Honestly, it is. I think this is probably one of the hardest parts uh, <laughs> about the entire character creation experience because. You know, uh, to me, all of these things are very valid, and which me, which led, leads me to 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 uh, that, you know, no one's ever gonna make the same choices as you. I think. Yeah, no, <laughs> these are all like really great. Like the first time I was making a character, I kind of spread my points out a bit, so I didn't. Which is good too. Like I got some uh, of something, but I didn't get like a like the larger bonus. So like nowadays, yeah. I kind of just put both points into the same thing when I make a new character. Yeah, that's true. I mean, I think that you can definitely spread your points around. There's no, there's no bad oh, yeah, part no, no. to you it. Can still do um, that. But, but like you know, it, it's it's like every time you put uh, you know your points into one area, you know the game can af the, the game plays through these four, right? So even though you have like a whole bunch of HP, uh, if your heat cap is low, then you're gonna get your your systems are gonna get exploded or something like that, right? Like you're you're gonna overheat. Or like you know your systems is too low, then you know you're gonna get hacked really easy. Um, but yeah, we're making a super fast pilot mech duder, so let's go all into evasion or agility. agility. All yeah. right, 
So, this is just the pilot. So my pilot, uh, Jurian Coins, call sign Comet, who is a former Starship pilot uh, with the skill triggers of showing off, staying cool, getting somewhere quickly, and being charming, of course, as all pilots are. Uh, his uh, other skills, or uh, talents rather, being ace, gunslinger, and duelist, because uh, I'm trying to make something that's good at like ranged and melee and flying, and also putting up some of his agility. Yeah, looks pretty cool. All right, All right. register new pilot. Now nice. let's get to the cool part. Okay, so we're gonna go to the hangar section and we're gonna build our first mech. Yeah, add um, new mech. <laughs> right, so everybody gets uh, the standard mech uh, at license level zero. Um, as you as you level up, uh, you'll get licenses, which allow you to uh, get different types of systems and weapons and and gear to customize your mech further, as well as getting different frames. Um, but standard GMS Everest mech uh, <laughs> is is still uh, a pretty good mech, and it's it's the the, the mech we start with. Actually, low key, like I want to keep using the Everest every time we level up but like <laughs> i want to like do a bunch of stuff and make like a level 12 everest build which i think would be terrible but like i don't know still still part of me was like yes let me use the vanilla one <laughs> <laughs> but yeah like essentially um i guess we, we could explain how licenses work um yeah and that there are like different sources for your equipment like some corporations some mysterious organizations all sorts of varying uh groups of most like like varying groups that you can get equipment from um yeah. just depending on like how much you invest with them uh they have different levels of licenses for different uh sort of frames of mechs um i think it it, it, it is two licenses that you need to invest to get the frame if i remember correctly yeah um, that's that's correct but at, at, like say you invest in um i don't know this barbosa frame here which i'm just showing but not able to get because i'm level one <laughs> Um, if you say buy one, if you buy a level one Barbosa license, they'll give you access to a new weapon. Um, at level two, you'll get access to the very large and powerful Barbosa frame. And then at level three, you'll get access to even more advanced weaponry. Yeah, actually, we haven't seen what the Barbosa frame can do on our stream, actually. But our friend <laughs> Steven is, is currently planning on, uh, choosing to use the Barbosa flame uh, flame frame right. <laughs> uh yeah <laughs> i know it's, uh in our in our stream when we stream lancers uh eventually whenever we stream again <laughs> you know when we do all right so do. uh let's go with the everest the one everyone gets at level zero i gotta give hey. it a name so i was gonna name it valkyrie because it flies but i guess i'll roll for a random name uh, let's see, Bloodthirsty Reunion, that's cool. Asking for a friend, interesting. Oh, man. These names are the best it's because they're all so, so long and so silly sometimes. They're just like, they're just like almost like half sentences, which is kind of cool <laughs> in its own right, so. Uh, yeah. Proper Procedure, Hell or High Water, Walk Free, Ode to Love. Ooh, Walk Free sounds pretty cool. Oh, to love sounds pretty cool. Oh, like so poetic. I, All these I saw Onward Journey, and then I reflexively clicked because I'm my mouth is saying is twitchy. Okay, Onward Journey. Onward Journey sounds good. Okay, let's start customizing this mech. All right. So the mech itself usually comes with frame traits. Uh, Everest's frame trait is initiative. So once per scene, you can make a free quick action, which is pretty dope. Uh, which means your mech is just you just you know can do something. You do a little bit more and replacement parts. Uh, whenever you repair, you can repair one structure from your mech. So essentially, it's like you have HP, and as your HP depletes. Once it's zero, you lose a structure, and there's a whole table you roll on to see whether bad stuff happens to you. But it doesn't mean you're dead; you're just still in the fight. But maybe your mech took some like serious, like traumatic damage, like maybe a, a mount breaks or like your arm falls off or something. But you're still in the fight because you know giant robots. 
um, which is cool because Everest allows you to, you know, it's, it's a beginner mix. So in case you seriously mess up somehow, uh, you're able to just slap it back together because it's, you know, take that part off the coffee filter and slap it in. <laughs> <laughs> the, the coffee yeah. maker everyone has is their backs. Just take pieces of that and use it to build your right, robot. Yeah, yeah, it actually kind of builds into like the lore of, of Lancer where like uh, General Massive Systems, which is GMS, is like the the most widely uh used like basically corporation essentially it's like everything in your mother down to like your house to your socks gms makes and the fact is they can just make all that stuff compatible so it's like they're like all their parts are are, are replaceable it's basically like the the honda civic of <laughs> of of mechs <laughs> Just, oh, cool, whatever. The free, you just slap a new part on it. It's so easy to find. Uh, anyway, so <laughs> for your, uh, for your uh, mounts, you have weapon mounts. You have a main mount, which is like a main weapon mount, which is usually like an assault rifle or like a sword. You have a flex mount, which could be either a double auxiliary mount or like a main mount. So you could have like a sword or you could have dual pistols or two knives or two mini rocket pods. Uh, and then you have your heavy mount for like your heavy weapons. which could be like a sniper rifle to like a heavy machine gun to a big ass sword to like, you know, plasma cannon. I don't know, <laughs> all sorts of stuff. And and on top of that, you can fuse a heavy mount with one of with a main mount or a flex mount or any other mount that's not a heavy mount, and um, turn into a super heavy mount. And that's like super heavy stuff, like. I don't know, capital ship missiles, uh, <laughs> like giant rail, like anti, like matter lasers, giant rail cannons, uh, all sorts of terrible, terrible stuff. Oh, a, a super awesome mega drill that you can, you know, uh, Gurren Lagann drill people to death, which is pretty awesome. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, uh, taking into consideration, I guess, uh, your talents, uh, you definitely need one main melee weapon and, and one, one auxiliary ranged weapon. If I well, know my at, stuff. at least one auxiliary ranged weapon. Um, but yeah. All right. Well, let's go for the main melee weapon first. Uh, and I'll yeah. put it in my main mount. Why not? Right. And this is where Concom, I think, on top of keeping track of all your crap. <laughs> CompCon uh, just gives you all the options that you have available because, you know, as you gain licenses, you'll get more options, but CompCon kind of uh, organizes it for you. So when you're building your mech, you can just flip through and choose what's actually available to you. So you'll never like make a wrong choice, essentially, or like a, a choice that's like illegal, <laughs> yeah. technically. But you um, can like yeah. also reveal all the things if you want to. Definitely, uh, for sure. But for now, so, so I put it in list yeah. view so I can sort by type, so I can see all the melee weapons. I think you get a choice between a charged blade or a tactical melee weapon. I, I also have a segment knife and a tactical knife. Oh, but those are auxiliary. If you Oh, that is true. It says, That's it's an auxiliary point. melee weapon, yeah. So yeah. main, so either tactical melee weapon, which just does 1d6 plus 2 kinetic damage, or a charged yeah. blade, which does 1d3 plus 3. Uh, energy damage. Yeah, and these are and these are like generic terms, but you can call your tactical melee weapon whatever you want, whether it's like a sword, uh, a big, just a big bar, <laughs> a hammer. <laughs> like, uh, a tactical melee weapon is just it's just something that that does kinetic damage. And there's, so I guess going more into the game, uh, <laughs> there's different types of damages that you can apply to your your enemies. There's kinetic, which is you know, you know, ballistic guns and like. Uh, slapping people with metal, <laughs> essentially. Um, then there's uh, energy, which is your pew pew laser beams, and you know your beam swords. Um, then there's explosives, so that's your, you know, uh, uh, missiles and and grenade launchers. And then there's actually one more, which is burn, which is like your flamethrowers and your melta weapons and uh, stuff like that. So. Yeah, I think that's all the types of damage uh, that I can remember. I think I think that's it. But yeah, uh, well, the charge blade does. Okay, so there's the thing. The the charge blade also has a tag, which is a armor piercing. So it does a little bit less damage than the tactical because the tactical on the upper left can get up to six because it or sorry eight because it's d6 plus two, while the charge blade 
the minimum damage. Uh, I think the minimum damage is actually the same between the two because it's um it's, it's a bit higher. It's four to six damage for the charge blade, but like yeah. three to eight for the tactical. But the charge right, blade ignores right. armor. But I was kind of looking at that yeah. tactical melee weapon, and I kind of like the higher high more than the. Uh, I guess the ga lower the guaranteed <laughs> yeah <laughs> the lower lower yeah you're right I mean I, I think that means you got to pick your targets uh, <laughs> just a little bit um, I find that uh, a, a lot of times you're when you're starting out when stuff has armor it like it could really affect you <laughs> yeah <laughs> so if you're not going with something with AP um, then you know you can you just have to pick your targets, right? Because then, you know, you're trying to smash something with three armors. This is going to be kind of difficult. Well, that's a fair but, point. you know, you can make it happen. Do whatever you want. But again, do. these parts are all interchangeable. So, like, next yeah. next mission, even, I can switch it out if I'm finding I'm not getting what I want into this weapon. Yeah, yeah, definitely. All right. Yeah, man. So let's just uh, go with the basic uh, tactical melee. I'll slap it around there. Tactical melee. All right. And my Here flex comes. mount. Right, so you probably want to uh, sort to auxiliary yes. because you want to get a ranged auxiliary weapon. So let's see, auxiliary weapon, uh, and I've got a few options here for ranged, such as the pistol, uh, the nexus. Oh yes, let's explain what nexuses are. Nexuses are. Basically, miniature drones that you can just release onto people. <laughs> Which I think is terrifying. <laughs> just like a swarm of, 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 of little drones that just uh, pew pew shred targets. <laughs> yeah, basically. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, let's just... Um, I don't know, I'm, I'm kind of want to just like, keep it simple and go with the pistol. Because I am going to get that yeah. bonus anyway from my... Uh, my talent. That's true. That's true. For sure, pistols are pistols are pretty dope. Also, if you're close to range anyway, having having a uh uh rate like a you know a ranged attack um is pretty good too because you're going to be in that that kind of um close space. As well, it has a threat of three, uh, which we were talking about earlier about Overwatch. So if someone starts their movement within your threat, you get to have a free attack. You can choose to use your reaction on that opponent's turn to fire an overwatch. Exactly. So the great thing about the pistol, too, is that it's reliable one, which means that uh, even if you miss, you still do one damage. Yes. Yeah. And it gets grunts and stuff for stuff without armor. It's one damage can mean a lot. Yeah. Anything without Those armor, I'm real good. I'm going to be really good on that. All right, great. So you can actually double up on pistols because that flex mount will flip to a double auxiliary mount. All right. So I got one hand that's holding two pistols. <laughs> or you can just have two pistols at your side. <laughs> <laughs> because I guess they're robots. You could have as many hands as you want, man. You could have one hand holding a weapon and two hands holding two pistols. I, I totally could. Um, yeah. Let's go with the heavy mount. I'm just, I'm just imagining the two pistols though like trying to hold them together and pull both triggers at once even though that's not how robots work <laughs> but uh that's how robots work. let's let's do the uh heavy weapon mount all right heavy weapon on your big guns uh or big swords whatever you want <laughs> yeah i don't have any particular restraints for this uh because like with regards to my talents or anything but i do want something that's like long range so i can fly and use it the heavy machine gun i think is one of my favorite Things, although it's inaccurate, so often it misses. Uh, inaccurate gives you a difficulty when you're trying to uh, make an attack roll, so you have to kind of factor that in um, when you're making the shot. But it does 2d6 plus 4 damage, which is like pretty a chunky. Lot. Yes, <laughs> it's pretty chunky. So, you know, for targets that are a little bit easier to hit, that doesn't have a lot of hi higher HP, typically those guys, those, typically those guys are the ones with the lots of armor um but if you manage to land a hit with this thing i mean it basically can take down a mech in one go um <laughs> just on the average so because i think the average on that is 10 actually so yeah that's like a lot of damage um but you could also get a heavy charge blade which is also pretty dope it's d6 plus three i was thinking about that because then that is that is in fact armor piercing yeah. but i do kind of like the idea of the machine gun so i'm going to slap that on but again, yeah, in, in actual cool. gameplay, I could just switch these things out 
whenever I need to. Okay, so Definitely. let's move on to the systems. So right now, um, I think I should only have like six system points. Yes, it'll say at the top right of the system, six system points. So each system costs a different amount of points. Um, and I'll have six of those points to spend on whatever I happen to get. So first thing I have to get, of course, is the flight system. Yep. Okay. Which is pretty hefty, actually. That's three system points. It's half half of your mech's uh, custom customization um, is is inter integrating flight system, which makes sense because getting a, a big hunking piece of metal to fly will take a lot. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. So. Boom. So let's go with that. Uh, flight systems. Um, one that I always end up taking that I think is pretty common is the custom paint job, which is essentially. I yeah. I swear, <laughs> that thing is like so polarizing for me i like never take it <laughs> <laughs> i don't know i i think it's it's very it's situationally useful but when it works it really works because uh, as as uh, ramon explained before as your mech loses hit points when it hits zero it's going to lose a structure and then it will take some sort of like significant damage or some something that'll like significantly uh debilitate it for a while um but if you have custom paint job when you take structure damage, you can roll a d6 and possibly go back up to one HP and not have to worry about your system being uh, like one of your systems being disrupted or one of your weapon mounts uh, not functioning. Yeah. Right. Actually, you just don't even lose the system, the the structure. Exactly. So it just it just scratches the paint. <laughs> so I mean, if you believe in yourself that much, I never believe in myself that much. And arguably, I take the most damage out of everyone all the time because I am I am uh, uh, a a melee close range junkie. So I'm usually the one getting shot first. I just like the idea of having a new paint job, so I'm gonna go with it, uh, which gives me a couple <laughs> okay. points left. Let's see. What's maybe something I haven't tried before? Maybe smoke charges. Maybe some smoke grenades smoke would be pretty cool. cool. Yeah, smoke, smoke charges will allow you to produce um, soft cover um, for for you and your allies, which is like you know what you know smoke launchers are supposed to do. Yes, <laughs> right. And uh, it's pretty cool because because uh, uh, soft cover will will be will, will uh, make it harder for um, your opponents to hit. It's, it's good. <laughs> smoke launchers sound cool. I also like the idea of you flying around all of a sudden, toot -toot, launching the smoke launchers out, and uh, all of a sudden it's all dusty, and then you appear, you appear out of the smoke, and you'll you land like a, like a swing. sword slash or something. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm going, I'm going for style here. Obviously, that's why I got the custom paint obviously. job. So let's get those smoke charges. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so I've got all my guns. I've got all my systems. Great. That's it. <laughs> yeah, I think that is about it. So um, you can use CompCon for uh, doing mech combat. I don't think we should. I don't think we have time to like demonstrate that. Cause, and this isn't about CompCon. Uh, this is just the video. Yeah. It's just more to demonstrate like how CompCon makes making the mech easier. Uh, but there are definitely a lot of things you can do with this system, or just go right into Roll Twenty, fill out a character sheet with your information, and then you can get going. Yeah, yeah. Um, but but this is why I love this game. Um, you can see from the plethora of options, even at the very beginning of the game, that you can choose. I don't think so far we've made a, probably a bunch of characters because we have a bunch of games that never really go anywhere. So we keep making new characters. Yeah, um, it happens. It happens. You know, sometimes one of them will stick. Uh, hopefully, the one that we're streaming. Check that out. Oh yeah. <laughs> uh, um, you but, can also uh, give your uh, pilot like armor, uh, weapons, and equipment um, as well, which is again very. I don't know if we need to demonstrate that, but they, you do have options for like different sorts of hard suits between being lighter and more agile, heavier and more armored, or special invisible. abilities like stealth or mobility, things like that. Yeah, or flight and stuff like that. You get a cool jetpack, or you know, or the weapons you carry. I mean, you could have a cool samurai sword, or like a, a sniper rifle, or and you could also carry different gears like grenades, or like you know, computers, or you know, disguises and stuff like that, like holograms and drones. So you know, it's it is. I have I have yet to, even on my 
itself, I guess, because, you know, we, uh, we would just sit there and create characters because it'd be kind of fun to kind of mess around in ComCon because it's so easy, right? Uh, I have yet to make a character that is the same. Yeah. <laughs> Which, you know, I've, I've made I've made quite a few characters, like, you know, probably like 50 or 100 characters by now, but I haven't never really doubled up on anything, which is kind of nuts. So, yeah, this is Lancer. Yes, it uh, is. Go- we'll link, we'll link uh, some resources to the, the game. Again, you could get the a portion of the the lancer rules for for free uh, i think it's just missing the dm section um which is where all the npcs are and all of the enemy mechs but if you just want to pick up this game for free and check it out uh we'll link it down below um and uh yeah this game is awesome i i am thoroughly uh impressed <laughs> and there's tons of there's tons of cool things coming on the pipeline um for lancer tons of uh fan created mechs like oh my gosh the amount of 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 actual homebrew mechs out there and actual like uh i think of the day of recording um uh, long room is out which is uh uh a a like a a, a supplement sorry that's the word i'm looking for a supplement that gives you like you know four or six more mechs that you can choose from on top of more triggers on top of more talents and then now i know that there's um some more stuff coming on the pipeline i think it's uh, no room for a wallflower setting is out there there's tons of homebrew settings with with um you know uh intro to, to Saldan and and stuff like that which has like you know a whole bunch of mechs in there it th- this game is insane with the level of of customization that you could possibly do so you know get the book check this out i don't know why this turned to an ad for lancer but yeah it kind of did just, but it. it is a very expensive <laughs> game that's obviously expanding oh. further it's something that's very you've got a lot of very great narrative based options but you also have like a ton of options when it comes to making your actual character and your actual mechs so uh, hopefully this video sort of gave you some ideas or helped you understand the process of making a mech using uh, CompCon, which is again a great site. We'll also link to it. So be sure to check that out. Be sure to check out the game Lancer and uh, make sure, you know, if you want to run a game in it, just be sure to purchase it so you can get the GM section. And that is about it. So yeah, just like, like uh, thanks for listening to, or watching this video rather, because this is on YouTube. Yeah. So it'll be a video. So thanks for checking yes. out this video. Uh, hopefully, if you, if anyone out there wants to make some Lancer characters, then just you know, maybe drop a comment about what kind of character you want to make, or hit us up on the socials, uh, Twitter and Facebook, uh, and let us know what sort of character concepts you have in mind. Um, again, no one's gonna build the same thing twice, so I think it'd be really cool to know what kind of things people want to make. And if you make it, uh, uh, let us know. Send us a screenshot of your sheet or something like that. Uh, yeah, be dope. Be sure to check out the channel and subscribe. We're gonna do more of these character creation videos, so stick around for that if you want to see more of that. Uh, you can also check out our Lancer game. If you subscribe, you'll be you'll see it in your subscription box whenever we go live, or you can hit that bell button to get a notification uh, when we put up a new video or when we go live. And that's about it. Check out our website as well to just see more information about us or about the games that we play. And I think that covers it for now. Uh, Ramon, do you have anything else to add before we sign off? No, I think you covered it. Let's let's give them give the people what they want. Uh, no, I can't do the the podcast outro on a not podcast show. Oh shit! <laughs> so oh, everyone, yeah, so I guess, so. Uh, <laughs> I guess I guess remember everyone. That's how you get into character. That's how you get into character. <laughs> Sick. Different outro for <laughs> All right, show. later, guys. <laughs>